Over the years, I've been asked a lot about what I think might be the secret to great worship leading. It's pretty clear to me what it comes back to. It's the secret life of that worship leader. See, we think that spiritual authority is being gained when we're on a stage, getting better at what we do. When we're working with our teams, when we're building these corporate worship experiences. The reality is, is spiritual authority is not built primarily on a stage. It's built behind a locked door. And by locked, I mean a locked door where there is no intention for presentation happening behind that door. I don't mean building a set. That's not the same as someone's secret place life. I don't mean working on your songs. That's not the same thing as someone's secret place life. Sure, it all matters. Sure, we're meeting with God and all of it. But there is something about that cultivated worship life with God where the only one responding to what you're doing is God in that moment where you have decided that you are not working on something, that you're not presenting, that you're not preparing to present, but what you're going to do in that room stays in that room and dissipates, if you will, into the moment. Marva Dawn once called it a royal waste of time. People who are worship leaders, men and women, who have not learned to waste time in the presence of God with their instrument, losing themselves in worship, whether it be songs that they know, songs they're creating in the moment spontaneously. If they haven't learned that, they're going to, over the length of their days, get very good at building sets and leading people in these experiences. They won't necessarily gain, I believe, the true spiritual authority that only comes the way David got it when he was out in the fields and he was meeting with God in those night hours. When there was no documenting going on, there was no big planning for that next event. There was just something unique and precious that was happening in the moment that would never happen again. And that was seen as not an utter waste. It was a royal chosen waste of time. And I think that if worship leaders today can get past that stage in their head, I don't think it's just a physical stage. I mean, get past the stage in their head to find, to seek that secret life with God and then to build it, to put hours into it every week, to put long periods of time where they are, they're learning how to hear the voice of God. They're learning how to um, put into song something the Spirit's stirring in their heart. That is where all those public skills, I believe, uh, get developed in the heart and the mind of the worship leader. Then the other details can be worked out. You can learn how to arrange bands and, and present from a stage and share the things you share, but you cannot learn intimacy with God by simply doing public things and even having your head in the space of the next public thing. It has to be alone and for that purpose alone.